Greetings, Glitter Gang, and welcome back to Catherine Scraps Live. My name is Catherine, and today we are going to be continuing on with our Christmas in July album, which we got started this afternoon. Ready to go. Merry Christmas in July, everybody. How's it going? Welcome back to the show. My name is Catherine and this is a channel where we craft live, as the name suggests, on Thursdays at 2 p.m. and 9 p.m. Eastern USA time. This is our 2023 Christmas in July album. I will be taking you through this entire album process from beginning to end. And we will be making some cute stuff. Our inspiration for this year's Christmas in July album, by the way, we do one of these pretty much every year. So it's a tradition at this point. Um, and the reason why we do them is because I am a pretty slow crafter and I like to show the whole process of what I'm creating so things just take me a long time um, that's just how it is and so if we're gonna have a Christmas album um, anytime near Christmas uh, any year then this kind of like we got to do it in the summer <laughs> that's just kind of it's the only way it's gonna happen it's the only way it's the only way it's gonna happen so here we are that's what we're attempting right now i'm uh just wrapping up some of the paper printing and then we're gonna get started on construction all right so I just wanted to finish this one page that I was working on. I'm been getting my, you know, print ready sheets. So I've got 15 sheets are ready to print. So we're in pretty good shape, pretty good shape. And we're going to have some embellishments as well. So I have been printing some embellishments as I go as well. So if we get to a decorating phase tonight, which to be frank, I'm not sure we will, but if we do, I'll be ready. Um, I would have been readier, except I had a very dramatic. So <laughs> I'm less ready than I was planning. Um, so yeah, basically what happened this afternoon was, um, well, let's do this. Let's get some craft card stock and let's get working on the construction. So for the construction troubleshooting phase, I'm just going to use craft card stock because uh, I have a lot of it and it's easy to see what I'm doing with craft. So we're going to work on the construction. So what I'm going to be showing you is three things. There's wallet version one and version two, and then version two will have two different bindings. So, um, and we're about to find out if any of these measurements are real. <laughs> okay, so wallet version one says, well, what I'm thinking for pattern paper, okay. So you can get the wallet base from one single sheet. So, oh, you mean, you asked if 15, no, I think we'll probably, well, pattern paper, I'm hoping we won't need a ton of pattern paper. I'm hoping this will be more cardstock heavy um, because they're five by seven and we have the box. So we'll see, um, we, should, we should know soon. But anyway, for the wallet, we're gonna start with wallet version one, which says we need an 11 by seven, I am going to give the measurements in this class. There is not going to be a guide or anything, so you have to take notes. So um, 
take notes if you want to make it. All right, so I'm going to start with 11 by 7 piece of cardstock. And then I need a 5 by 9, a 7 by 4, and two 7 by 2 and a half. Okay. I can get the 5 by 9 out of the remnant of the 11 by 7. So that's nice. And then we've got two seven by two and a half and one seven by four. Okay. But yeah, I'm hoping that this is not going to be huge on the pattern paper because we'll see once it's, are you done or do you want more paper? Oh, you're done. Okay, dokes. It wants more. It says feed me. Feed me more. Send me more print jobs. Send them to me. All right. So um, this afternoon I had to uninstall and reinstall both my, uh, both Photoshop and Premiere. So I've had a fun day, <laughs> a fun day. But this paper is really pretty, so it's helping. All right, now, here's the, so we're gonna start with the inside of the wallet because everything's gonna get attached to the inside. Okay, so the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna score it in half. And so, just going to center it on my board and score it in half. And then I'm going to line that score line up. I'm going to flip it over, line that score line back up, and then a half inch on either side, I'm going to fold it in half again. Okay. Okay. So this is the inside bit. All right, here we go. Okay, so it's gonna look like this, all right? And this is just in here so that if it gets fat with stuff, it has room to breathe, all right? So that's what this little crimp is for. So if we just like put a ton of stuff in it because we have a lot of tickets or something, that's what that's for, okay? All right, so that's the 11 by seven piece. So the 11 by seven piece, center it on your board, score it right down the middle, flip it over, score a half an inch on either side, okay? Wallet version one, piece one, 11 by seven. Then we have the five by nine piece. That's gonna get scored at one and at eight inches on the nine inch side. And then four inches on the five inch side. Okay. 
And then what's going to happen to this is it's going to go like so, okay? So that we can tuck larger things in it, okay? Larger things. And then this side is where we're going to build the wallet. So that's what these three pieces are for. This piece is seven by four. It's going to get scored at one and at six. And then on the smaller side at three. Okay. And then we're going to go, so this will go here like so, okay? And then these two are going to get scored at just one and six. Okay? And so the way they work is, they're not even the same size. One of them's wrong. It's this one. Let me just give it a little trim, trim, trim. Now it's the correct size. Perfectione. These are two and a half by seven. Okay. And then these kind of go like so. So they make this little stack. So that's how we get it to look like a wallet. Tuck, tuck, tuck. Okay. So let me show you how you would assemble this. And I'll go over the piece sizes as I go. All right. So, this one, all right, so this was 11 by 7, scored down the middle, and then a half inch on either side of the middle, okay? Now these, let me tape them. And we will be having a good time. So, hello to Vicky Mouse and to Donna and Beverly. Good evening to Melanie. How are you, Pat? Candy, hello. Ella, hello. Melanie, I already said, but hello again. Crystal, hi, how are you? All right. Okay, now. So all of these pieces are getting tape on their flaps. Tiny Cat's doing, uh, Tiny Cat, so, so, the food is all over the place. So, basically, um, Kitty is doing really well on her diet. So, Kitty's on a diet, and her diet's going well. She's lost five ounces so far, which is quite a lot for a cat. So she's doing really well. 
Um, she is not happy. But the thing about Kitty is Kitty is very food. Like, she's very interested in food. And she's, no matter how much she has to eat, she's, like, could always eat more. You know what I mean? Like, Kitty, she just, if there's food, she just wants it, you know? So, she's just not a self-regulator. <laughs> so, um, so, she's not even happy if we let her eat as much as she wants. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, so we're just, we're just gonna, we just have to be, you know, very firm. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Ella, <laughs> Ella and Bev can relate. Me too. Me too, guys. Me too. <laughs> I get it, kitty. I get it. All right. So now we're going to cut our corners on the two pieces that have the corners. And a quick and dirty way to do it is just to cut through the X. So we've given Kitty, we've switched her food. So she used to be on an extremely expensive, high quality food that was known for being nutritionally dense, but calorically thin um, is how I've been saying it. So essentially just um, not a lot of calories, but a lot of food and a lot of vitamins and minerals and things like that. Um, and she hated it. Uh, it was the most, it's literally the most expensive cat food in the world. And she, it's, its name is solid. I am not kidding. And she was like, what is this trash? I want fancy feast. So we finally took her off it. We finally took her off it and we put her on a keto. <laughs> she's on keto now. So she's on Tiki cat. Um, and Tiki cat is an extremely low carb, um, cat food and first of all why do any cat foods have carbs in them um i know the answer is because it's cheap but really cats don't need to eat carbs <laughs> so um it's weird it's weird all right so this is the piece that was um five by uh nine and now fold it up, it's four by seven, okay? And um, so Kitty just, uh, what she wants is junk food. Now she's not as bad as Marcel because I saw Marcel eat a Cheeto, okay? So Marcel really will eat garbage. <laughs> like, so, um, so she's now on Tiki Cat. She's on a carnivore diet. Now, luckily for us, she does like Tiki Cat. So, what is going on? Okay, there we go. Okay. Um, I don't know what happened there, but it's fixed. Okay. So, um... Yeah, Marcel's like whatever. I'll eat, I'll eat trash, <laughs> literal trash. You can, no problem. All right, so on these two and a half inch pieces, we just need to make marks. Um, we wanted them. What was it? One and a half inches apart. Yeah. So just with a pencil one and a half inches in. Um, so Kitty's on this carnivore diet. Now, Marcel is obsessed with Kitty's food. That's all he wants to eat. We have caught him physically attacking her cat food container, trying to get into it because all the cats have personalized cat food containers where they will only open for their chips, their RFID chips that are in their shoulders. So only Kitty can eat out of Kitty's bowl. Only Tiny can eat out of Tiny's bowl. Only Marcel can eat out of Marcel's bowl. Um, they can't eat out of each other's bowls. And we had to do that because Kitty would eat everyone's food. 
she would just eat and eat and eat and eat and eat. Okay, now let me show you how we do this, okay? So this is a, these pieces are two and a half inches. There's, there's, this pencil line is an inch and a half down from the top. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to fold them and stick them on top of each other, okay? Now, I'm sure one day we'll come downstairs and it's going to be in pieces and Marcel's going to be swinging from the rafters. Okay, so you just put them on top of each other like so, okay? Like so. All right, and now, and this is important, so the tags that go in them can slide past each other. You have to free these flaps, so we have to cut these flaps, okay? And I'm going to use a smaller scissor because it'll just be easier. But I'm just going to cut right along this paper here. Okay. And this way all the flaps, so that makes it totally open in the middle. Okay. And that's what we want. Okay. All right. So that's an important step. All right. So then, just flip it around. The, it's called solid gold. <laughs> solid gold was the cat food that she refused to eat. Um, she loves Tiki Cat. Now, Tiki Cat is also extraordinarily expensive because it turns out that if you need to put your cat on a high quality, low carb, no filler diet, that costs a lot of money. So much like human food, <laughs> the healthy stuff is way more expensive than the cheap stuff. Okay. So I've got that last piece down and it's the same thing. We need to cut, <laughs> cut through. No, that, that, that's its real name. I'm not, that's not just me saying what it should be called. Its real name is Solid Gold. And it's a family owned and operated business. They obviously care about animals. Like, all I can say is that Kitty hated that food. So, now Marcel is on Solid Gold. And Marcel's on it because he's will eat, like I said, I saw him eat a Cheeto. I mean, he'll eat anything. So, he's on it. So, but he doesn't want it. He wants Tiki Cat. So, I don't know. <laughs> so, anyway. So, for dry food, Marcel and Tiny Cat get Blue Buffalo Wilderness, which is the no filler, high protein food, which is a no filler, high protein food. But it's not, it's not totally no carb. It's not, ke it's not keto. So... Kitty, Kitty is not on Blue Buffalo. She is on Dr. Elsie's Clean Protein, which has no carbohydrates at all. Um, like, seriously, none. And it is twice the price of Blue Buffalo. So that's why she's the only cat on it. So that's why we don't feed all the cats the same stuff. <laughs> because it's too much money. All right. So now, okay, we are going to just take this whole thing, all these flaps and everything, and stick it on this side. All right. Okay, so here's our wallet. So now here's the thing. Okay, so this is this largest pocket. It goes all the way down. Okay, you see? So you see we go, this is a seven inch ruler. 
and it goes it goes all the way down this pocket this next pocket also goes all the way down and this pocket goes all the way down and the reason they go can go all the way down is because when we cut those slits we freed up the pockets so if i hadn't cut those slits this pocket would end where the next pocket starts because it would bump into the, the back of the flap of that pocket. So that's why we cut them. So this is the wallet. So it's gonna go like this, okay? And then on the front, we're gonna put our uh, window and on the back, we're gonna put our pocket pocket. Um, but yeah, we've got this expansion if we need it. And then we've got a pocket here for larger items. And then we've got these three pockets here. So we've got our nice little wallet so now let's start working on the other elements of it. All right, so, but that's, that's it so far. So, so far the, the measurements are correct. So let me bring it over, bring the sheet back over. So what we're doing is the, starting with wallet version one as our base. So this is the one that would just be standing by itself in the box, okay? These are the ones that'll go in the box. So now we need to add to it a front window, a strap, and a back pocket, okay? So that's that's what's left to do. So let's work on the front window. So we need a six by eight piece of cardstock. Oh, this is, this is gonna be rough, I don't think, well. <laughs> we'll just stop when we run out of paper. <laughs> Speaking of paper, the paper in this collection is so pretty. Let me show you. I mean, just look at this. Look how pretty. Isn't that nice? So it's really nice, nice, nice paper. All right. So to make the back or to make the front window, we need a six by eight piece of cardstock, a four and three quarter by six and three quarter inch piece of transparency and a piece of pattern paper. I'm gonna skip the pattern paper for now just because we don't need it for construction. Um, and then we also need the stuff for the strap. I'm just going to go grab a sheet of transparency really quickly. Well, I'll just bring the box because I'm going to need more than one sheet eventually. Yeah, I think this project is going to be really cute. I think we're going to all be very happy with it. All right. So for transparency, it is four and three quarters by six and three quarters. And we can get two per transparency sheet. All right, I'm just gonna bring them over. And then we're skipping that pat pattern paper because that's just to make the inside look pretty. We don't need that right now. And then we need a piece of six by eight cardstock. All right. Yep, 
You're gonna get the baking spirits, right? That that one was cute. That one was really cute. I was tempted. Okay, so this is the piece that's six by eight, and on the six inch side, we're gonna score at a half an inch and five and a half inches. And then on the eight inch side, we're gonna score at a half an inch and seven and a half inches. Okay. Now, We need to now just take, flip it over to the back. So this is scored and these are folded around to the back. Okay, so this is the back. Before you, um, before you start folding and all of that, going to want to draw a line an inch in from each edge, not from the score line, but from the edge itself. Okay. So Candy's going to get Baking Spirits Bright, which is one of the paper collections that was under consideration for this project. And she's going to use it to make recipe box gifts for the holidays. That's a good idea. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to cut out the middle of this. Okay. And I'm going to put my ruler on the inside so that I can see that I'm cutting from this pencil line to this pencil line. It's just easy to see where I'm cutting. And we're going to cut all the way around. Okay, so where was I? So Kitty is on Tiki Cat. She likes Tiki Cat. Marcel likes Tiki Cat. And he tries to fight Kitty's bowl to get into her Tiki Cat. Now, in regards to dry food, Marcel's not too particular about dry food. So he, he just eats whatever is in his bowl. Tiny Cat loves Dr. Elsie's, which is Kitty's dry food that costs twice as much as Tiny Cat's dry food, which is Blue Buffalo. So she will, so she's just sad. All, you know, she's just sad that she doesn't get any blue buffalo <laughs> or any uh no she gets blue buffalo she doesn't get any dr elsie's so kitty can eat a whole can of tiki cat and tiki cat is big cans they're six ounces but kitty is a big cat so even on a diet she can eat a whole can of tiki cat per day so she gets half a can in the morning and half a can in, at night and then she can also have two tablespoons of dr elsie's crunchies and still be on her diet. And so those two tablespoons, I give her as treats. So um, she thinks she's getting treats. She's actually just getting her food. We used to put her crunchies on top of her wet food, but she would go out of her way to not eat the wet food and only eat the crunchies. So now she, that's, we do it different. Okay, so I put quarter inch tape all the way around the inside of this. And that's where the transparency is going to go. So, um, so I have a jar of her, um, of her crunchies in the living room. And I also have in there a cat food treat dispenser thing where it's these long, narrow plastic tubes and you put the food in the bottom and the cats have to reach their arms down and grab the food like one crunchy at a time and bring it back up and eat it one crunchy at a time. And so I put 
I put it in, <laughs> I put her food in there. So that she's got a, her dry food, I mean. Oops, 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 oops. Oh my gosh, this could not be going worse. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, so now we have that. All right, so here's our, here's our window, okay? Now, ultimately, like eating all the bacon off the salad before eating the salad. Exactly. So that's how we dispense her crunchies. So she, um, and then I, just because I mean, I put them one crunchy per tube until she's eaten all the tubes. And then I put one crunchy per tube until she's done with her tablespoon. So, um, we just sit there and it's a, it's a game that we play. <laughs> okay. Now <clears throat> on one, two, three, on two short and one long sides, we're going to put tape cause this is going to get folded back around and that's going to be how it gets stuck to the book. But this flap is going to get totally folded under and adhered here. And that's, what's going to form the pocket. Okay. So that's what's going to make our transparency pocket. So no tape on this flap. All right. Whoops. Tape goes on the outside. On three of them and then on one of them on the inside. All right. So now Okay, on this side that's gonna get folded around, we need to cut out these corners. So I'm gonna just cut it. And you just cut the corners so that the score line is cut off with the piece you cut off. Okay, so I cut, you know, so that the score line is gonna be removed. And that just gives a little cleaner look. And then this piece just gets folded right under. Okay. Ta-da, like so. Okay, and so what that's gonna do is that's gonna do two things. It's gonna firm up this edge so that as things are going in and out, it's just a little bit stronger right here because it's two layers of cardstock plus one layer of transparency. But also it's gonna cover the raw edge of the transparency so that things are not gonna ever possibly catch on the transparency as they go in and out, okay? And then these other corners we'll just cut like we normally cut and stick it down. So when we go to stick this down, where's our wallet? Here it is. Okay. It gets stuck to this and we want the open side on the open side. So anyway, what happens with Tiny Cat is Tiny Cat will, if she's just had it, she just had it up to here with food, gross food that she doesn't like, she'll go stand in the living room on the back of the couch and scream. And what that means is if you don't give me Dr. Elsie's, I will burn this place to the ground. So when she does that, you have to just... Uh, hand feed her. She will not accept a pile of Dr. Elsie's. You have to put it in your hand and you have to hold your hand up to the back of the couch and then she eats the Dr. Elsie's out of your hand. So, <laughs> and that happens, I would say, about twice a week. <laughs> about
about twice a week. <laughs> okay, so here's the front. So look at this beautiful pocket. So you'll be able to see what's, what's in here. So now we have to add the strap because the strap will get adhered here. And then in the finished one, this is just a test to make sure all of our, um, <laughs> she, yeah, she needs like a little bullhorn and be like, what do we want? Crunchies. When do we want them? Now. <laughs> <It's just like laughs> all right. So the strap measurements are six inches by one and a half inches. Okay. And I'll do the optional loops on this one. So six inches by How many? One and a half? Okay. Hello, Lula Reads. Welcome. All right. Okay. So the strap is going to get attached here. And you won't see the strap because there'll be pattern paper liner over it. And then on the back, it'll go in the loops that are on the pocket. Okay. All right. Okay. So let's do, let's give ourselves four inches of strap and I'll do two inches of tape. We are working, we just started. So it's a, uh, this is only going to be the second video in the series. Um, and there will be a YouTube playlist so you can check the other stuff that we've done. But what we're doing is we're doing our Christmas in July project and we are making wallets to hold photos, embellishments, tickets to things you may do over the holidays, what have you. Um, and we're doing it now so that it'll be done before Christmas and you can just relax and enjoy the holidays. And then when the holidays are done, you put all your stuff in it and you're good to go until next year. Yeah, hopefully it'll be done before Christmas. We can do it. We can do it. All right. So, and I'll be going over all the measurements and everything as we go. So you can take notes. And of course, if you miss anything, you can go review the videos in the playlist. And it'll all be there. All right, so now I'm just going to just going to stick this in so I kind of know where the center is. And then press it down. Now, in the final version, we'll probably reinforce this with Tyvek so that it will be stronger. Okay, but that's going to go around to the back. Oh my gosh, this is, can you already, you can already see it, right? You can already see it. Yeah, that happens. <laughs> I, I'm much better at collecting than I am using Lula, so... 
I get it. I get it. Okay. All right. So here we are. So here's how our wallet's coming together. So you can put stuff here, put stuff here, put stuff here, put stuff here. You can put stuff here. And now we're going to make the back pocket. Okay. All right, so let's get our reference sheet. So we've done the strap. This is the loops here, this measurement. So that's why the strap has two measurements. And this actually should say two, not one. All right. Okay, so now we have back pocket. So this is where we're, we're up to. So we're working on the pocket on the back. And so we have one piece that's seven by six and one piece that's five by four. Okay. Do you want, you still need paper. Okay, wow, you are hungry. Okay. So it's what? It's five by four and seven by six. Okay. So here's the five by four piece. I don't have a seven by six piece and that's okay. All right, here we go. Okay, so this is the seven by six inch piece and it's going to get scored at um, on the seven inch side, we're going to score at one and six. And then on the six inch side, we're going to score at five. And this is going to make a five by five pocket. Okay. So that's going to go right here. Okay. And then the flap is going to come down. Ooh. Okay. So this is why we're doing this mock-up. <laughs> um, it's going to be a problem with the loops. It either needs to be an inch longer than it is. And the loops go through, go through it which I kind of, that's kind of cool because if we make this longer and the loops go through it, when this is closed, it'll also hold this pocket shut, which is kind of a fun idea. So let's do that, but that means we need a different size piece. Okay. All right, so this needs to come down to here at least I would say so it needs to be it needs to be seven by six uh, at least okay seven by six we'll make it work all right
No, not seven by six, five by six. It doesn't have to be seven because it doesn't have to, um, it doesn't have to, it doesn't get folded on the sides. So it's all good. Five by six. Okay. So first we got to get the big sheet, which is right here. So which measurement we're changing is the one that's five by four. It's now five going to be five by six. <clears throat> All right. No scores. Thank you, Donna. That is what I was trying to say. <laughs> okay, so this is five by seven. And we're going to just score it at six. Okay. And if you want it to look like a little fancier, you can do those one eighth inch scores for about, do about a half an inch of them if you want it to have like a roll top, but that's up to you. We can talk more about that when we get into the like detailed, slow, this is what we're doing. We figured it all out. All right. So this is gonna go here as a pocket and this is gonna go here and then we're going to make holes in this piece so that the loop can go through them. Okay, so I'm just thinking, is this longer than it needs to be? Should we lose an inch? I think we can lose an inch. What do you all think? Wait, it's too long. I cut it wrong. Ha! Huh? It's supposed to be five by six and I cut it five by seven. So I'm just going to cut it down to the correct size. All right, there we go. Now we need the cardstock for the loops. And that's just going to be quarter inch strips of cardstock. And I think just so they're a little sturdier, I'm going to cut them three quarters of an inch and fold them over. So I'll explain what I mean in a second. So these are for the loops that are going to hold the strap. Okay. I'm going to score at a quarter inch and a half an inch. And I'm only going to score one of these. Okay, because I can get two lips, lips, loops out of this. And I'm just going to fold it in half. Okay, so Now, 
we need, I'm going to glue this shut. And then glue it again. <sighs> glue. All right. And then do it again with the other side. Blue drying is exciting. All right. Then what we're going to do is glue it again. Okay, so we're going to set those to the side for a second. They can just continue drying. We need to do some other stuff. All right, so this piece requires a piece of pattern paper for construction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a piece of white cardstock for that just to show you, just like so you can see it. You know what I mean? Um, so first things first, this is the pocket from the bottom. I'm just going to add tape and stick it down like a huge. So onto the flaps. Here we go. This is Miracle Tape. And there we go. All right. So I'm going to burnish and then cut through the corners. And then, oops, these are not scraps, so that's not trash. Don't throw it away, brain. Okay, so this is going to go on the back here, and I've only removed the tape from the bottom because it's just easier to handle, and it's only sticky on one edge. All right. Okay, so this is where the straps are going to go. They are going to 
hold this in place. In a box on a dollhouse. Um, ink. I store ink a few ways. I've got ink. Mo I like Alex drawers for ink. Um, I also have like, I keep my distress inks. I have them in a, a spinning tower. All right, so let's talk about the pattern paper. So this piece is five by five now, so I need a free four and three quarter inch by four and three quarter inch piece of my pattern paper. I'm just gonna use white, pa white paper scraps from another project, so just so there's some contrast. I'm gonna cut a four and three quarter inch square. All right. Now, that's gonna go on the piece like so. Okay, now the loops have to come up through it. So we just wanna kinda know where they need to be. So just lightly with a pencil. I'm gonna mark. All right, so our loops need to be from, it looks like a half an inch. Uh, it's like three eighths of an inch. So three eighths of an inch down from the top. Well, not even, because it actually needs to be a little bit bigger. So it's a quarter inch, it's a quarter inch. And then, because we want to be above the lines that we drew. So for the other line, I would say two inches down from the top. Should work. Okay. That should work. Okay, so we are gonna put these, let's say a half an inch in. So we need to make a mark a half an inch in and then three eighths of an inch over from that. Okay, so that's the slit that this is going to fit into. We're going to make a slit for it. And then let's go a half an inch over from that. And then three eighths of an inch over from there. Okay. And what we need to do is just cut, 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 cut. Well, let's use, let's do the whole uh, process. So this is a 1 16th inch hole punch. And everywhere those lines intersect, I'm gonna punch a hole. So I'm just looking through the hole finding the intersection of those lines and punching a hole. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna remove a little sliver. 
So this is a piece of glass. Uh, I'm just going to cut. I'm going to line my ruler up with the bottoms of the holes and just cut from one to the other and then flip it around and line it up with the other side of the holes and cut from one to the other. And that's going to give me these two notches. That's exactly what I want is those two notches. All right. Then I do the same thing with the other set of holes. And there we go. Okay. So now that we've got our notches cut, okay, we're going to take these strips and we're just going to feed them in. Until they're, you know, And then I'm going to just fold them up and then back. Okay. And we need a little bit of glue. Well, let's fold the other side as well. Okay, let's make sure they don't bump. They don't bump. All right. Just let the glue dry for a second. All right. Okay, so now we have this band. Okay. All right, now we just do it again with the other one of these. So we stick it through. We kind of center it. use this just a little bit easier to use okay fold it okay so kind of just press those and then we'll add our glue okay All right, now that is glued. So now we're going to stick it to the page. We would erase normally, but this is just our mock up piece. But it's going to work. Okay. So let's get our tape down.
And what we'll do with the main project, if we decide to do the loops and not a um, and not a magnet or something like that, then we can um, make a template for this part to make this part a little bit easier. Just going to make sure this is stuck down well. I mean, it's looking like a wallet. Yes? Yes. Okay. Um, so I work with both vintage and modern. I would say overall, I prefer kind of more vintage stuff. Um, more distressed. Although we are using very modern uh, papers for this particular project. Okay. All right. So we've got that. So now what we need to do is we've just got to figure out like where to cut the window into this piece for this piece. So the window needs to be from the top <laughs> four and three eighths, I would say probably, well, we can probably get away with four and a quarter. Um, we'll try four and a quarter. So four and a quarter down from the top. So one, two, three, four and a quarter. So that's going to be like three eighths of an inch up from the bottom. Okay. And then in from the side. One and seven eighths, it looks like. Okay, and then it needs to be, I think mixing up hot pink and faux vintage on the same page is perfect. Two inches, I think, should do it. Two inches up. I think mixing your eras and mediums and all of that looks really, really cool. Okay. And then five eighths of an inch in, I would say mm, three quarters is probably too much. So let's do five eighths. I forgot this ruler doesn't have a five eighths. 
Not that I can. Oh, here it is. No? It's on this one. For some reason. Okay, five eighths. All right, so this is our window, okay? So now what I'm going to do <laughs> is I'm just going to draw an X in the center of this. And again, this is something where we'll want like a template maybe. Um, I'm just cutting like a half an inch in because I want to fold this back a little bit. Okay, so this kind of looks a little wild, but essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out this center square first. This little very narrow one. So what I did is I drew a half inch in from each of those lines. All right. So now I'm removing this very center piece. And then I'm going to just cut from the corner of that removed piece to the edge of each of these. Or to the corner of the window, what's supposed to be the window. I didn't need to draw those diagonal lines in the beginning. So, okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to score these so that I can. All right. What I want to do is I want to fold these back to strengthen this window. So, ta-da, ta-da, ta-da. Okay. All right. So that's just going to clean that window up and make it a little bit stronger. Let's just make sure that that window is in the right place. Hello. All right, so how is this going to work? Like so. And then that will hold the back shut as well. We may Okay. What I'm going to do to make my life a little easier is I'm going to pull out the strap. I think the thing to do with the strap is to put it in at the end once the loops are in place. So that way any Oh, okay. The tape stayed on the inside. Love that for me. Okay. Keep coming, keep coming. I need a little bit more juice. All 
All right, so. All right, so I've cleaned up the glue. All right, now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna erase. Ugh, I have this glob of glue that will not get off my finger. Ugh, gross, you're disgusting, go away. Whew, went away, okay. All right, so I'm gonna erase all this pencil lines just to, I don't know, just so it'll look nicer. Even though this is just a sample page and it doesn't matter, I still want it to be clean. <laughs> okay. So to give this a little bit of extra strength to make the window nice and smooth, we're just going to Put glue on these and fold them back on themselves. All right, so. And then this, fr these frame bits won't show because we'll just put pattern paper around the window on both sides once we are working on our final one and we're not working on a prototype. All right. So, by the way, if you are new, I am wearing an apron, so I'm not wiping glue on my pants. <laughs> I know that's what it looks like, but that's not what I'm doing. Although this afternoon, my sister did say I needed a new apron because this one was getting gross. So apparently it's reached the amount of glue that she's willing to tolerate. <laughs> so. All right, so now that we've got this all done, I'm gonna go ahead and place it on the back. Okay, so. All right. This just needs a little scooch more drying time. So I'm just gonna wave it around. Undo dries pretty quickly, but you know, it's about a thousand percent humidity right now, so. All right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tape this, we're gonna put it through the loops and then we're gonna back it in to the front. And then that will finish this piece. So we'll see um what adjustments were made and i'll go over all the measurements and those will be the final measurements all right so for those of you like donna who are uh trying to keep up so you get your christmas albums done then this is gonna be the way okay so we're gonna go ahead and put this through the back 
And the reason for that is I just want to know, the, you know, the height. And then I'm going to just peel this. And then I'm just going to look through it, you know, so I can see where to line up. And then press it into place once it's in its spot. All right. So that is it. We've got it done. All right. So it can expand. It can get this thick. It just kind of naturally wants to relax into this size. So plenty of space for all your all your doodads and tickets and all that stuff. I think my piece is crooked, but it's a prototype, so I'm just going to live with it. Okay, so let's go over the different elements. So we've got the strap and the loop. This is a closure that requires no special materials. So no tin caps, no magnets, no Velcro, nothing. All you need is paper glue, etc. Ella, I think I'll make six. I, my original plan was to make 12. But uh, I'm not going to have enough cardstock for that, I don't think, because I think it needs more than two sheets of cardstock for each one. And I only have 24 sheets of this color, not this color, but of the of the olive. So I think we'll make six. Um, but yeah, so we'll make six of these. Ultimately, this is the prototype. This is the wallet. We're going to make a box to hold them. So we'll have six wallets in the box. OK, and then here's let's get the sheet out. And I'll go over each measurement and how they came together. Okay. So now that we know that it works. And again, this is version one, which is the unbound version, which is the version that we'll be doing, we'll be decorating in class. That's the version that's going to go in the box and we'll make a box to hold them all. And that's, so that's that. So this is the unbound version. This is the class version. We're going to make a box to hold them. Okay. All right. So. Starting with the front window. So this is the front window. You can see here that you can go, you know, you can see what's in this pocket. This is a five by seven pocket. The window is four by six. It's made out of one six inch by eight inch piece of cardstock. That's this border piece right here. It also is made out of one four and three quarter inch by six and three quarter inch piece of transparency. That is this piece of transparency right here. You can use vellum for a smokier look. You know, it's up to you what you want to use. And one four and seven eighths inch by six and seven eighths inch piece of pattern paper. And ultimately where that's going to go is over the strap, just so you don't see the strap. Okay, so that the wet, even if the pocket is empty, you'll see paper through the pocket, um, through the window rather, and that you'll never see the strap. Okay, so that is mostly decorative and that's why it's not here right now. But four and seven eighths by six and seven eighths will fit. That may be a tight fit. We'll want to check it with a dry fit. If, if it's too tight, we'll just go with four and three quarters by six and three quarters because we know that works because the transparency is in there just fine. Um, I made a note that this could be a magnet flap. By that, I mean that this strap could be magnetic. We could have, a, instead of the loops here, we could have a metal disc here. And then the strap could have a magnet underneath it. That is what I was planning on doing. Uh, but this is cool. So we'll probably do this. I love how the lo loops go through this flap and hold all the pockets closed. It's a very fun look. And you know, I, anything interactive, I really enjoy. So we'll probably stick with the loop. So speaking of the loop, the strap requires um, one six inch by one and a half inch piece. So that's this, this is the strap. So it's one and a half inches by six inches. And that's because it has to go, you know, it has to be in here, go all the way around and then go under the loops. So it's a pretty big piece. And also just so if you do expand it and you do stuff this, you do have wiggle room with the strap as well. So that even if you put a lot of things in these and you really stuff them, you still have room. Uh, the strap will still hold if you make the strap nice and long in the beginning. Okay. And then for the loop, it's 
um, I said that they were one and a quarter inch by two and three quarter inches. Two and three quarter inches is really specific. I actually did, uh, what size were these? They're this size, cut in half. So this is seven. So they're three and a half inches actually. So do that. Do uh, one quarter inch by three and a half. Two and three quarters is actually not quite, I don't think it's quite enough. So let's change this to three and a half. All right, so two, one and a quarter inch by three and a half inch, and actually it's three quarter inches if you wanna fold them over on themselves and make them nice and thick, which I do think is the right answer. Um, Cause that will make them nice and sturdy. They won't have to be reinforced with Tyvek. They look more like leather that way. So I think that's the way to go. Okay. So these measurements are correct. These measurements are now correct. So that's two pieces, three and a quarter by three and a half. They're folded the three and a quarter. They're folded over once and twice. So they make a quarter inch strip but that makes them nice and thick and with no raw edges, only scored edges, and then three and a half inches is the right length. Okay, so the back pocket, all right? So we changed some of these measurements. So this piece here is the bottom part of the pocket. That's this, so you can see that things will go in, into here. This piece is seven inches by six inches, and that makes a five by five pocket once everything is scored and folded. And then this piece, you absolutely could use ribbon for the loops. Yes, you could. Yep, ribbon would be very cute for the loops. Or if you had a little piece of leather, leather for the loops would be cute. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, so f this piece is seven by six. I know it's the six is hard to see, but this piece is seven by six. This piece is seven by six, scored at one and six, and then at five. So it makes a five by five pocket. And then the flap is now five inches by six inches so that we have room for the window. Um, so it's extra long to accommodate the, the loops so that it goes through both flaps, but I love the way that it looks going through both flaps. So that's what it is. And then I have a reminder to myself that we need a metal disc. That's just if you're gonna use a magnet, you have to remember that your metal disc has to go on this back pocket somewhere, you have to hide it. And then um, I'm going to, um, I, here I've written four and three quarter by six and three quarter pattern paper. That's to go here to line it that's not structural, so it doesn't need to be here. We're going to put pattern paper on the whole thing, of course. All right. And then wallet version one here. Okay. So, so these measurements are correct for the back pocket. So this piece again is seven inches by six inches. And this piece is five inches by six inches and then scored. And of course, all of the scoring and everything was on the video. And then wallet version one, and again, wallet version one is the continuous piece wallet where it's all one piece. And that's because it's gonna be a standalone freestanding wallet. It's not gonna be bound into anything. It's not gonna have rings punched into it. It's not gonna go in a book. It's just gonna go in a box with a bunch of other wallets and they're all gonna be stuffed with your Christmas ephemera and um, like tickets and photos and whatever else, like all your Christmas memories and things everything you collect over the holidays. Okay, so this is made out of an 11 by seven inch piece of cardstock. It's scored down the middle and then half an inch over from either side. The middle of something that's 11 inches is five and a half inches. So it's scored at five, five and a half and six. So that's 11 by seven. And then there's one five inch by nine inch piece. That's this piece right here. That's this long pocket. Okay, it's nine inches because it's folded over on the top and the bottom. That makes this one long pocket, it's big enough to hold four by six photos and any larger um, embellishments, ephemera, tickets, memorabilia, etc. And then um, we have this stacked wallet over here, okay? 
and the stacked wallet is made out of one piece of seven inch by four and a quarter by four inch cardstock so that's seven inches across scored and when it's all folded together it's five by uh, three and then the two pieces of seven inch by two and a half inch cardstock that make the other two bits so the question was why don't you put the loops on the top flap so you don't need the window i mean you can do that um i don't know that it's as sturdy if i were using magnets i would put the magnet on the base pocket as well so that the strap would be holding that top flap um so just like my preference for ultimate sturdiness is for it to be on the thing that's like not movable um it's probably fine as you all know i over construct or cautiously construct i'm worried about things falling apart <laughs> um for whatever reason so i like to make sure things are going to be like last i guess and I worry with things being on flaps that they're going to tear off. They're not going to hold as well, that kind of stuff. So for me, it's like a paranoia thing. <laughs> um, it does look cool. Uh, so, but yeah, it's, it's, anno it's annoying. If you don't want to do it, you don't, you probably don't have to do it. I'm probably being overly cautious. Um, it, it, it probably can be simplified. <laughs> All right. Wow. Well, I mean, what an interesting thing we have made today, friends. I'm very happy when things end up looking the way that I planned in my brain, which this did. Um, it really does look like a wallet, cell phone holder kind of thing. It's got room for expansion, which I wanted because, you know, um, and we only had to change one, two, three, four, five, six measurements. So is that good? Is that bad? I don't know. It's not bad. Let's say it's not bad. It's not bad. <laughs> you could make the front a shaker also. That's true. That's true. Um, it, instead of leaving it open, you could make it a shaker. Absolutely. Absolutely. That would be super cute as well. Um, that would be very cute. Little bows and Christmas ornaments and snowflakes, that kind of stuff. Very adorable. Okay, my goodness. All right, so I'm going to hold this up so you can screenshot it. Just going to, you know, of course, you'll when you watch the recording, just pause it. So you can look at this and write it up. I was covering a measurement. You can pause it, write it all down, have it to refer back to. This is the paper I'm using. This is the card stock I'm using. All my little reference drawings for myself. All of it is here. 2023 Christmas in July album. Should go pretty smoothly should go pretty smoothly so what we'll do next week is we'll pick up with wallet version two and i think what i'll do is i won't do all of the elements i'll literally just do the wallet itself just so it'll go a little bit more quickly and what we'll focus on is how to do wallet version two we'll talk about the ways it differs from wallet version one which is hardly at all and we'll talk about the two different ways to bind it so that'll be the focus of the first class next week and then after that we will just start the project so we'll 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 start using our uh, our olive cardstock we'll start decorating it with our paper and embellishments and our little doodads and goodies and all that stuff so that's all to come next week so thank you very much for joining me everyone i'm so happy that you were here with me tonight welcome to everyone who was new i am live tuesdays at 2 p.m eastern usa time and 9 p.m eastern usa a time this is the 9 p.m eastern usa time show that is wrapping up right now 
Um, if you subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications, you will be notified when I go live. And in the video description, you will see a link to a Facebook group uh, where you can get reminders there and all that good stuff. So with that said, everyone have a wonderful weekend and a wonderful evening. Please enjoy yourselves. Remember, it's still summer. It's the 100 critical days of summer. There are more accidents in the 100 days between Memorial Day and Labor Day than the rest of the year. Did I say Tuesday? I'm sorry. It's Thursday. I Apparently, I said Tuesday. I'm not live Tuesday at all. Z I'm not live on Tuesdays. I'm live on Thursdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. I've been doing this show on Thursdays since 2009 <laughs> and yet can I remember what day cannot remember what day does it matter I don't know I have to have an alarm on my phone to remind me to, to do the show <laughs> apparently Gretchen's keyboard has has had a meltdown and refuses to participate but she's excited to be starting a new project I am also excited to be starting a new project I enjoy Christmas in July it's one of my favorite things that we do every year so I'm happy about it. I hope we all have a really good time. The paper is so cute. So I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a wonderful weekend. Stay safe. Stay hydrated. Do not blow things up recklessly. And I will see you next week. Bye now.